What's up guys? The main goal behind this effect is to make it look like it's painted on a surface instead of existing in 3D space. So let's change the world first. I started by setting the look to very high contrast. Now we have to add a paper texture to the world. The link for this one is in the description. We want it to always look the same so objects look painted on top of it. So to get that effect, let's add a texture coordinate node and use the window coordinates. You can also use a mapping node to move it around. I'm also going to desaturate it a bit and fiddle around with the contrast using the curves node. Now, we don't want the paper messing around with our lighting, so we need to disable it for everything except the camera. We'll use the old light path trick for this, mixing the paper with a black color using the camera ray socket. Now we have one color for the lighting and another for what the camera sees. We'll use this texture again when we make the object's material, so let's put it in a node group. Alright, and that's the world. Let's throw some lights before making the material, just to get some light on the object, don't think too much about it. By the way, if you're seeing this kind of pixelated hard edges, go to the shadows panel and enable soft shadows. You may also want to double the viewport samples. I sometimes found glitches when using a few samples. Alright, material time. We're going to work this the same way we would do a watercolor painting, from light to dark. That means we let the paper show through the light areas and cover the shadows and edges to suggest the form. Bring back the paper texture from before and we'll plug it into an emission shader. Let's start with the edges, add a layer weight node and lower the blend a bit. Now we have to distort this to make it look like paint. We have to make a vector that we can plug into the normal socket of the layer weight. Add a noise node for each axis, a combined vector node and texture coordinates. Now play around with the noises. You want to bring up the distortion, but not too much, otherwise it gets too messy. We need to get the shape of the object back to make edges, so Let's add a geometry node and add the normals with a vector math node. I also want to control the intensity of this effect, so let's drop some math nodes and set them to multiply. Then add a value node to control the amount to multiply. I find that 0.7 looks good enough. There's one more thing left to do here. I think it looks better when paint seems to flow around. And we can use the window coordinates to get that effect. Let's add them in the same way we did before. Back to the layer weight node, we'll add a color ramp to control it. Set it to B spline to make it smooth. Now the trick to get a watercolor effect is to make the transitions between colors zigzag between dark and bright to make the borders look wet. I got this trick from Hayden Lander's watercolor shader in the Unity forums. Now let's add another color ramp set to constant to add harder edges. And we can mix this too by multiplying them. Alright, let's get the lighting information now. Bring back the principal shader and plug the painterly normals in there. Let's also add a shader to RGB node so we can convert the shader result into an image and plug it into a color ramp. This is the core of this effect. Just like before, we want to jump between dark and light. But this time, we'll have more color stops and packed tighter. You might also have to zoom in real close for this. And it might be a bit different depending on the lights in your scene.
Now let's bring all this together using the mix RGB node set to multiply. So only the dark colors will be mixed. Time to add some color to complete this effect. Add another color ramp in the principal shader area and set it to be spline to make it smooth. Pick some colors suitable for your model and play with some hue variation besides value. But don't go too dark either, subtle is better. Add a final color ramp for the edges. This one has to be even more subtle than before, so the hard edges don't stand out too much. And that's it! Don't forget to organize the nodes for your future self. Hope you enjoyed this one! Link to the blend file is available in the description. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more cool stuff. See you in the next one guys!